my beloved members, this is Pastor Haynes. I wanted to introduce this series of messages in the book of 2 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's where Paul opens up and gives some details into his personal perspective. Uh, he does what you call an autobiographical sketch of his life and ministry. I hope and trust that this serves to encourage you, um, strengthen you, and just motivate you to function at a higher level as relates to ministry and manifestation of the Word and glorifying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The what I'm going to talk about today. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is my last installment of my series of 2 Corinthians. There is a chapter 13. Some of those verses are included. In fact, you need to read from chapter 12, verse 11, all the way through the close of the chapter. But uh, hopefully, we won't take too long today. Verses start at verse 11, uh, stop at verse 4. I'm not going to read all of that. I'm going to read out of the NIV today. Let me start at the. Uh, read out of the NIV. Uh, verse 14. I am not ready to visit you for the third time. I will not be a burden to you, because that I want is not your possessions, but you. And all children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and spend myself as well, if I love you more, will you love me less? Be that as it may, I have not been a burden to you, yet crafty fellow that I am. I caught you by trickery. Did I exploit you through any of the men I sent you? I urge Titus to go to you and I sent our brother with him. Titus did not exploit you, did he? Did we not act in the same way, the same spirit, and fellow, uh, follow rather the same course? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? We have been speaking in the sight of God as those in Christ. And everything we do, dear friends, is for your strengthening. I'm going to stop it there. I want to talk about marks of a mighty ministry. Marks of a mighty ministry.
How many of you know that you can't really do anything great for the kingdom without the help of God? Do you recognize and realize that God has to motivate you and empower you to function on a higher level? You can't do it by yourself. Amen. The good news is that God has no respect of persons. God doesn't just work with old people. He doesn't just work with young people. He doesn't work with folk in cliques. God has no respect of persons. He will use any and everybody who is willing to surrender themselves to his will and his way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about what I call signs signatures. Signs signatures. That, that when God uses signs and wonders, he puts his signature on this. Yes, yes. The Apostle Paul said something that really got me. Uh, and again, you know, you go through, you remember this list of trials and tribulations Paul had said he'd gone through his experiences. Uh, he said something that kind of got me when he was in this chapter, he told the Corinthians, he says, that uh, there is no reason for you not to really know the validity of my ministry and my apostleship. Because you have seen me, uh, he didn't say me, he said, you have seen the signs of apostleship performed in your presence. In other words, all the works of all the signs and wonders of an apostle. You've seen them perform in your own hearing. <laughs> Not only that, he says, instead of me bragging on me, you should have been bragging for me. Uh, again, again, he says, it makes me appear to be foolish having to brag on myself. We talked about that before, that, that seemingly if God is actually using you, you shouldn't have to brag on yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like John said, let the works I've done speak for me. I wish I had a witness here. Well, that's a powerful passage because, you see, that passage not only says, you see, if the church members don't brag on you, your works are talk for themselves. Yeah. When I read it and it got me, I said, you know what? Out of all the talking that Paul did, and how he said it appeared to be foolish because they're making him brag. But one thing you never see, Paul never brags about his miracles. Of all the miracles he performed, he never bragged on his miracles. Watch. And yeah, I mean, when you read Acts, you can see the list. It's a long list of them. When you read Acts, you know, you remember that time when he cast the demon out of that young lady who was following him around? You remember that time when that boy fell out of the balcony and died and Paul went down and brought him back to life? Yeah. All through Acts, he talked about in the 19th chapter how people start bringing folk to Paul and just wanted his shadow to fall on the, the sick. They would take handkerchiefs he had touched and, 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 and aprons and put it on sick folk in order for them to be healed. That's how some of these crooks get this mentality. He never mentions any particular miracle he performed when he starts talking about his history. And I thought about it and said, well, you know, when you really think about it, none of the apostles really did. I remember when he sent the 70 out, they came back. Remember when they came back and said, Lord, you know, we were able to cast out demons and do all these, all these things you sent us and told us we would do. We were able to do it. And what did Jesus respond? He said, don't get all excited about you can do all that. You want to get something to excite you? You ought to excite yourself with the fact that your name is written. I'm going to get somebody right? in the book of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's preach this stuff right now. That, 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 that don't get excited about the, the, the miracles you've done. Don't get excited about the wonders you perform, but rather be excited that your name is in heaven on high, that God has selected you. I see that that excited a whole lot of people. That really kind of excited me. 
Because what it really says is that is that people who brag on the miracles they perform aren't performing miracles. People who brag on their miracles aren't performing miracles. The Apostle Paul says, uh, one reason I don't brag about it is because it's not me. The miracles that are performed, the wonders that are performed, are not really performed by my power, but my ability. They're really performed by the power of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all better hear me today. Godly leaders don't take credit for what God does. Godly leaders don't brag on what God does through them. Godly leaders give all the glory and the honor to the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you saying? That, well, we, we don't have miracles to perform. Well, maybe the problem is we don't have enough folk who are willing to give God the glory. Yeah, yeah. If I'm one of you who say, well, I think they still have apostles today. Uh, you know how the jury is still out for me on that kind of mess. I mean, I got a problem with you trying to give yourself a title. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the qualification that I have for the apostle, you got to see Jesus face to face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you start telling me Jesus appeared to you, I start letting you kind of funny. <laughs> you know, but if, if that's okay, I don't have a no problem. Can't say it can't, I know God is able. But my question is, why are you bragging about it? Instead of telling folk what you are, just be who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're an apostle, you don't have to have folk to call you an apostle. Just be an apostle. If you're able to do miraculous work, don't brag about it. Just do the work. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. I told you for myself, I don't have a problem you kept saying you're a healer. My problem is why are you telling folk to come to your tent? If you were here, you'd hang out at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the sick folk are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to go, you gotta go out to, to Clinton Hospital. You ought to be hanging out there where, where, where the patients are. You, you ought to be where the sick folks are congregated. But if you have the power to heal, you ought to be healing folk who need healing. Yeah. You don't have a witness here. Yeah. Oh, say, Paul, no, I, think I can't take credit for any of that. No, no. I can't really take credit for anything God has done through me, but at the same time, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. I want to hear somebody. Yeah, yeah. Who strengthens me. What are you saying? I'm saying, I'm saying, saints of God ought to have a more positive attitude about what God can do through you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You ought to make a resolve to function on a higher level. We got too many saints who are willing to function on the lowest Christian level. Once you get your past to go to heaven, that's all you want. Yeah. I say, I know I'm going to heaven. That's all I need. You, you want to function on the lowest scale. And God said, no, no, you ought to be uh, desiring to function on the highest scale. I, yeah. I just don't want to be a mediocre Christian. I don't want to be just an average Christian. I don't, show up. I want to go above and beyond my wildest expectations because the God I serve is able to go to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever I can ask to be. Yeah. Why is it when you go to work you want to excel? Why is it yeah. when you go to school you want to excel? Why is it when you go to social clubs you want to excel and when you come to church you want to function on the lowest level? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tells me 
and all he did was pat you on your back. Uh -huh. If God talked to you, God gave you an assignment. Yeah, yeah. You need to be going somewhere. You need to be talking to somebody. You need to have a consciousness of God wanting you to do something that you didn't think about before you got here. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Your name. I'm, I'm, I'm not that important. Everybody is important to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's not a matter of can God use you. The question is when. <laughs> when will God use you? It's not a matter of is He ever going to call my name. He calls everybody's name. Yeah. The question is, will you answer? Yeah, yeah. Yes. When he calls. Oh, yeah. oh, that thing Paul says, whatever I do, miraculous works I do, it's not me that's doing it, but it's God working in me. Mm -hmm. When God works in me, a wondrous work, I make sure I give him the credit. Yeah, yeah. That's why I got a problem with sad looking Christians. <laughs> See, if you say it all the time, that means you aren't doing anything. Say it, say it. If you're not doing anything, that means God is not using you. Huh. If God is using you to do great things, that means you ought to be bragging on them. I don't have time to throw a pity party. I'm too, I'm too busy saying amen. I'm too busy praising God. I'm too busy saying thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now that I see this sign's signature, I see this spirit of self-sacrifice. This spirit of self-sacrifice. Paul says something else. He rings all the way through it. But I think we who are saints ought to really remind ourselves of it often. You can't really make meaningful contributions to the kingdom without having a selfless spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't function with God and be concerned about yourself huh. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You can't perform the works of God when they are predicated on being appreciated from the people of God. <laughs> that that if, if the only time I'm going to preach is when I can get an amen, I don't need to preach. Y'all don't get it. The only time I can serve is when somebody's going to shout or somebody's going to give me credit. He said, ain't no sense you trying to serve that it doesn't work that way in the real world. I don't care what folk have taught you. When you were around God's folk, you can do a whole lot of folk act like you haven't done a thing. That's how I say y'all. Singing, they singing their hearts out. You look out there, and y'all yeah, heard folks stand up clapping their but we got some folks sitting there looking like they're a lump on the lump. <laughs> <laughs> you got the mic in your hand, you trying to sing for the Lord, and you trying to inspire for you sitting there looking like <laughs> Yo, you're going to sleep on your time, you know. It's like somebody running a hundred yard dash and you running out of wind, and the joke sitting over there going to sleep like nothing's going on. <laughs> See, you learn, you learn that the dedication to what I'm doing is not predicated on the faces I see. The Father told Timothy, don't allow their faces to intimidate you. Don't, don't allow them looking at you to cause you to want to give up. That, that your motivation don't come from their faces. function in the kingdom because I'm looking for you to pay me. I don't function for the kingdom because I think you're going to give me a love offer. I don't function from the kingdom because I got an anniversary coming. I don't function from the kingdom or in the kingdom because I know you're going to pat me on the back. He says, my reward comes from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness? 
here. So I gotta learn how to function whether I get it returned or not. Yeah. Paul said we function like parents. Huh. Parents don't expect their children to save up money huh. to retire them. Which I had a witness here. Good parents try to save up their money to help their children. Yeah. Good. See, back in the day, they didn't have social security and all that stuff. They used to have to have a big family to have somebody to take care of them when they get old. That's why a lot of you black folk in trouble. Y'all boy, they say nurses are going to have a heart attack. <laughs> I tell you, sometimes that's the best place to be. You know? yeah. yeah. You need no weak lady trying to turn you your big fat self over all the time. <laughs> that's why some y'all back trouble and all that because you're scared to go to a nursing home. And that might be the best place for you. Huh. But that's another sermon. I don't want to miss this one talk about that. But the fact is, is that, is that I got to understand that I want to take care of my children. I want to do for my children, not because I'm expecting them to do something in return for me. Mm. But I want to do something for my children because that's the parental instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had a good yeah. Parents want to provide. I'm talking about good parents. I'm not I'm talking about trifling folk. Good parents want to provide for their children. Yeah. And what they do is not predicated on whether the child returns the love. Mm -hmm. I love you not because you love me. I love you before you even knew who you were. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish I had a witness here. I love you while you were still in the womb. Yeah. I loved you when you were still a fetus. I loved you before you could talk. I loved you before you could walk. I loved you when you weren't doing anything but sticking up my house. I loved you when you were doing anything but, but breaking up all my stuff. I loved you before you could even function on a higher level. My love for you is not predicated on you loving me back. That's part of my instinct. Y'all don't hear me. Well, that's the way a saint has to look at life. Yeah, you yeah. understand that when you function in the kingdom of God, you're not functioning. You don't love folk because they are lovable. You don't love folk because they love you in return. You love folk because that's part of your nature. That's why I said yeah, we yeah, have to yeah. love everybody. Yeah, yeah. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, what Paul said, you Corinthians haven't really given me a whole lot of reason to love you, but you need to understand I love.
because they recognize that we need to love folk the way God loves us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, it's all about what end you're looking at. If you're doing it respect or expecting something in return, look at the wrong end. Yeah, yeah. You look at it up here. He gave his love first. Yeah. I wish I had. See, we love him, the Bible says, because he first. Come on here, somebody. See, anybody who's incapable of loving is folk who don't recognize the love of God. Wow. The Reverend, you don't know what they've done to me. Well, I tell you all the time, whatever you've been done to, you've done worse to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't speak to you, you don't speak to God a whole lot of days. They mistreat you, you mistreat God a whole lot of days. Uh -huh. You ignore God. Sometimes now we want to come to the Lord's house and say, thank you, Lord. You don't want to worship you. How do you mistreat God? Go through a whole day and won't say, thank you, Lord, one time. But you want everybody to smile and grin every time they see you. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Well, my brothers and sisters, finally, I see the servants recognize they are supervised by a superpower. Paul says that, uh, he has a sense of accountability, but his accountability is not to the saints at Corinth. His accountability is not to man. His accountability is not to other folk, but his accountability is to God. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. God and leaders understand the sense of accountability. You recognize that uh, you're not answerable to man. But you are answerable to God. Wish I had a witness here. I, I, I've, been in, I've been in the world a long time. I've been around church and all the stuff. I've I heard stories about deacons camping out in women's house trying to catch a preacher coming to the wrong house at the wrong time. I've seen all kind of junk in hotels and all kind of stuff. I've heard all kind of stories. But you know what? I, I've never been intimidated about folk finding me. <laughs> The first thing you can do to make sure they don't catch you is don't do anything that's catchable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you that sometimes you can even be misunderstood. But I'm not intimidated by folk. You see, the devil can make you think you're so smart you can trick your way around life and folk won't catch you. And I think I'll tell you, ain't nothing you do in the dark won't be exposed in the light. But I, 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 am, I am intimidated by God. Yeah. Because there's no way I go, God is not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing I do that God is not looking at me. Yeah, yeah. There's no thought I think that God is not listening to me. That God knows me better than I know myself. And the thing that, that really gives me to, to, to dedication, the thing that makes me really want to be about seriously and seriously functioning for the Lord is that I am accountable to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, I've got to stand before God's judgment of God. Well, that don't seem exciting, y'all. Well, that's exciting to me because you see, a lot of folk uh, don't recognize that when you know that you are accountable to God, it causes you to function on another level. Yeah, yeah. That's why I close up on Saturday nights and I got to preach it. Want to spend some time not studying. The sermon is already ready. I spend time on the meditate. Want to spend time with God. You can't preach a sermon like this without the power of God working through you. Yeah. Which yeah. you can't expect the Holy Ghost to do anything through you if you haven't totally surrendered yourself to Him. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? No, 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 no. I've got to recognize God is the one that I answer to. Folks got to be, you know, when we going to do this, and we gonna, I ain't worried about y'all doing a whole lot of stuff. You can vote on my past. I told you before, but you can't vote on my ministry. And my ministry is in the hands of the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when one don't close this up to God, to open up another door. Yeah. But I am accountable to God to what I say and what I do. Some folks don't want you to preach certain things. I was going around and had one church had nerve enough to tell me, we want to look at your sermon on Thursday so we'll know whether or not we can let you preach it on Sunday. So just take my name off the list already. But see, I don't even need to be in that kind of situation. I, I don't preach stuff that's, a, that's approved by the deacons. 
I don't preach sermons that's approved by the trustees. No, no. My sermon has to be approved by the Lord. Because the Lord might want me to preach something that step all on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord might want you to talk about your very fault, flaw, and failure. And you won't be scratching out, but the Lord won't allow me to scratch it out. That's the very thing He wants me to highlight. The Lord might want me to talk about homosexuals, and you got to tell them that's a homosexual. And you know, when we talk about Get up and 
in church saying, I want to commit murder. No, no, you see, you see, that's not the kind of stuff you brag about. That's the kind of stuff you do with coke in a dagger. That's the kind of stuff you do when you hide in a coma. That's yeah. the kind of thing you do when you don't tell anybody because you don't want to be exposed. Yeah. But yeah. I tell you, when the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, when the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, he gives you a spiritual boldness. Yes, yes, yes. He calls you to recognize that the Lord, he found me where I was. He found me the way I was. But the Lord, he fixed me and he makes me whole. I don't have to lie about my past. Yes, I can tell you, yes, what you talking about is true. I was there. I but you talking about history. I'm talking about current events. You talking about where I was. And I'm talking about where I am. You talking about who I used to be. I'm talking about who I am right now. You talking about how low I was. I'm telling you how high I am. You can't blackmail me. I told you I don't like stories. When they blackmail in the main character, they're going to pay money and do stuff. Stop the word from getting out. A real child of God can't be blackmailed. Because when you start talking about what they did, say, yes, you're right. If they don't know it, I'll tell you, amen. What she's saying is the truth. What he's talking about is the truth. But let me tell you about the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what God can do. He can come in your life and make a difference in your life. He can find you where you are and take you to where you want to be. He can take your dirty heart and give you a heart of love. He can take your contaminated existence, wash you, clean you up, and make you whole again. Do I have anybody here? Feel that testified. Do I have anybody here ready to say I do have a past? But what I've done in the past.
but they see God working through us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we're performing mighty ministry, they're not bragging on Bethany. They're bragging on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. When you're really where God wants you to be, is when they can't help but see Jesus. You walk like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. You move like Jesus. You love like Jesus. You help like Jesus helps. Folks see Jesus. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair.
see you soon. Thank you.